Hello, I'm Andy Fandango, and today I have a collection of 8-bit computers. Mrs. Fandango thinks I'm a bit odd, but she understands that I have needs. However, back in 1980, things were a bit different. After all, if you had a pocket calculator, what would you even do with a home computer? Before we get started, I'd like you to know, I've made more detailed videos about all these machines, so check them out if you're interested, and if you like what I'm doing, please do like and subscribe. Let's start with something controversial, the Texas Instruments TI-99 4A. It's technically a 16-bit computer because it uses TI's own 16-bit microprocessor, but I've included it in this video because it's effectively running in 8-bit mode and is of the same 1980s vintage as its 8-bit rivals. I also have the optional speech synthesizer module, and I've got some software packages for it, all on cartridge, so nice and easy to load. The VIC-20 was Commodore's first bread bin computer. I had one back in the day and didn't really get on with it, mainly because of the wishy-washy 22 column screen. Like the TI-99, the VIC has a lot of pretty good quality software on cartridge. And I've got a modern compilation cartridge with loads of software on it, including some great recent games. I like it more now than I did in the 80s. The Commodore 64 was the successor to the VIC-20 and fixes the VIC's main issues by having a 40 column screen and 64K of memory compared to the VIC's measly 5K. I've got an original tape deck too, but most of the software I have is on cartridge, including some classic games and some more recently produced compilations. The C64 was the biggest selling computer of the era, but I never owned one. Instead, I had a BBC Micro. The BBC Micro was a solidly engineered machine selected by the UK government to promote computer literacy in schools. This is the 32K Model B. There was also a cheaper 16K Model A. It appealed to scientists, engineers and educators, but was a surprisingly good games machine. I've got an original Technomatic 5 and a quarter inch disk drive. And inside this cardboard box that apparently cost £199 is a cheese wedge 6502 second processor. I've got a few original titles on cassette including some text adventures which have the best cover art anywhere in my opinion. I've also got some classic games on disc like Exile, Palace of Magic, Revs and of course the iconic Elite. The BBC Master was the even more serious big brother to the standard BBC Micro. It had sideways RAM to give a total of 128K of memory, a slightly better CPU and built-in business software. Mine has an SD card reader and inside I have an ARM powered Pico second processor, which lets me run BBC Basic super fast. The Acon Electron came later and was like a BBC Micro cut down for the masses. It was still well built but cheaper and unfortunately lacked the performance of its bigger siblings. 
I've got an original plus one expansion box that allows cartridges and has some extra expansion ports. I've also got a few titles on tape which is nice. And some of them are pretty good conversions from the BBC games given the limitations of the hardware. The Electron was introduced as a rival to Sinclair's cheap but very popular ZX Spectrum. The Spectrum was a fantastic piece of consumer electronics design. It came in a compact and achingly pretty black box with rubber keys showing off its many functions. It was about half the price of a BBC or Commodore 64 and you could tidy it into a drawer at the end of the day. I've got two modern expansion boxes. One to provide HDMI video output and the extended graphics ULA and one to connect a joystick and SD card. I also have a fair few cassettes of my favourite games, although it's a drop in the ocean compared to the number of games published for the Specky. And here is Manic Miner. Loading from tape cassette, just like back in the day. A few years later, Amstrad bought Sinclair's computer operations and released the Plus 2. This is in fact a Plus 2A. It has 128K of page RAM and a built-in cassette deck. It also has the advantage of an RGB video output, so I don't have to tune in an old analog TV. And it has a half-decent keyboard. It's not as pretty as the original Spectrum, but it is more functional and it can still use the modern add-ons I have for my standard Spectrum including the updated graphics ULA. My example does unfortunately have the distorted sound issue that's common on some circuit boards. I might fix it one day. And that's my current collection of 8-bit era computers. There are more that I'd like to have. A ZX81, TRS-80, Atari 400, Dragon 32, or the list goes on. The machines I've got are the ones most special to me. I'm sure you have your own favourites. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Cheerio!